wilt thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee psalm eighty five point six these words of the psalmist express the heart cry of many of god's children today there is a growing conviction everywhere and especially among thoughtful people that unless revival comes other forces will take the field that will sink us still deeper into the mire of humanism and materialism with that conviction there is also a deepening hunger for a fresh manifestation of god indeed so intense is the longing and so heavy the burden that the words of the prophet isaiah are frequently on the lips of god's children o oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens that thou wouldest come down we have seen man's best endeavors in the field of evangelism leaving the communities untouched true we may have seen crowded churches and many professions but then all that is possible on the plane of human activity as has been witnessed over and over again it has been said that the kingdom of god is not going to be advanced by our churches becoming filled with men but by men in our churches becoming filled with god today we have a christianity made easy as an accommodation to an age that is unwilling to face the implication of calvary and the gospel of simply believism has produced a harvest of professions which have done untold harm to the cause of christ we use all the modern means and facilities for the propagation of the gospel our technique in christian work and witness has been developed to a fine art and during recent years evangelize has been heard from congress convocation and assembly but as we look back over much activity in church work and witness what do we see not flags of victory that tell of communities won for christ not congregations throbbing with spiritual life and the desert made to rejoice and blossom as the rose no not flags but gravestones like the stones of our scottish culloden that tell their pitiful tale of frustration and defeat so we are today faced with the need pressing urgent and awful for god to manifest his power the need of a godsend holy ghost revival many years ago dr henry drummond wrote of a natural law in a spiritual world it seems to me that our great need today is to rediscover a spiritual law in a natural world the ills that shake the very foundation of our civilization have their roots in the spiritual and not in the material man has gone wrong at the center of things and he must get right there was it not gladstone who said my only hope for our country is in bringing the human mind into contact with divine revelation now let us be perfectly clear that only god can do that is this not the conviction that finds expression in the words of the psalmist if there was to be a revival god must do the reviving and it was god's people who were to be revived i read in a little book recently we do not have revivals to get men saved men get saved because we have revival let us now consider three aspects of revival its origin its agency its outcome the origin of revival wilt thou not we do well to remember that in the whole field of christian experience the first step is with god thought feeling and endeavor must find their basis and inspiration in the sovereign mercy of god to me one of the most disturbing features of present-day evangelism is the overemphasis on what man can do and i believe this to be the reason why we so often fail to get men and women to make the contact with christ that is vital how few there are today who in the supreme moment of conversion or decision become conscious within themselves of a new and overpowering reality the knowledge of god having done a saving work within them the apostle paul puts it in clear light in his letter to the galatians when he writes it pleased god to reveal his son in me the fact of ultimate reality surely is this that salvation is of god he is the god of revival and we must look to him and to him alone i have already referred to the cry of the prophet isaiah his convictions were that the mountains would flow and nations would tremble only when god came down in other words he is just saying that nothing will happen unless there is a mighty demonstration of god it is my own deep conviction that the average man is not going to be impressed by our publicity our posters or our programs but let there be a demonstration of the supernatural in the realm of religion and at once man is arrested I have seen this happen over and over again during the recent movement in the Western Isles. Suddenly an awareness of God would take hold of a community, and under the pressure of this divine presence, men and women would fall prostrate on the ground, while their cry of distress was made the means in God's hand to awaken the indifferent who had sat unmoved for years under the preaching of the gospel, the agency of revival. Wilt thou not revive us again that thy people? God is the God of revival. He is sovereign in the affairs of men. But we must not believe in any conception of god's sovereignty that nullifies man's responsibility we are the human agents through whom revival is possible 
to say as so many do we can do nothing may be a very accommodating doctrine to them that are at ease in zion but it will not stand in the light of divine revelation samuel chadwick in his book humanity and god writes the operation of divine sovereignty and the freedom of human will are not irreconcilable to the wisdom of god our responsibility is not in the explanation of mystery but in obedience to obligation and privilege i wonder if we are really alive to our responsibility and privilege i have read that robert murray mcchain had the picture of the setting sun painted on the dial of his watch and underneath written the night cometh every time he looked at his watch he was reminded of his responsibility as a minister of the gospel and of the charge entrusted to him if we study the life of the early disciples we see how their whole being was animated and actuated by one great purpose to be at their best for god they carried the seriousness into their witness that the man of the world carried into his business or the explorer into his journeys and toils they lived for god and for souls i am disturbed by the attitude of the church in general toward aggressive evangelism or revival by evangelism i do not mean just an effort to get people back into the church this effort while commendable does not get us very far what i mean is something much more it is the getting of men and women into vital saving and covenant relationship with jesus christ and so supernaturally altered that holiness will characterize their whole being body soul and spirit it seems to me that the time has surely come when we must with open mind and true heart face ourselves with unqualified honesty and ask the question am i alive to my responsibility as a laborer in god's vineyard i personally have constantly to remind myself that i can be a very busy man yet a very idle minister how easy it is to live more or less in the enjoyment of god's free grace and yet not realize that we are called to fulfill a divinely appointed purpose our commission is to declare the whole counsel of god in the midst of men to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of satan unto god that brethren is our privilege and our task and yet we must confess that too often the great things of god have not been the predominating things the lesser things of life have been allowed to absorb our interest and the lure of the lesser loyalty has blurred our vision and robbed us of our passion to win souls for jesus christ what then is the essential to recovery and revival surely a wholehearted desire to be right with god to stand before him in an adjusted relationship i am convinced that if we are to see the hand of god at work we must give to our lives the propulsion of a sacred vow and with hezekiah of old say now it is in mine heart to make a covenant with the lord god of israel brethren the new truths that grip us this morning must find expression and embodiment in a new dedication that is if we are to be men whom god can trust with revival as a young student in edinburgh it was my privilege to sit under the ministry of the late doctor of st columbus how well i recall the subduing sense of the presence of god that came over us as that prince of preachers called us to our task upon you said the doctor christ lays the great task of evangelizing we talk of the great trust of human life the tremendous responsibility of an engine driver the sea captain or the leader of an army there is entrusted to them the care of human lives but to us there is entrusted the care of human souls souls to be brought to christ for pardon and healing through his precious blood to be sunlit by his presence and consecrated to his service and at last to be set as gleaming jewels in the crown of his eternal glory or because of our lack of vision be allowed to wander further and further from god and as the years go on trample out the lingering image of their maker and at last be shut out forever in the dark despair of unending woe perishing perishing thou waste not willing master forgive and inspire us anew banish our worldliness help us to ever live with eternity's values and views may god help us to make this our prayer the outcome of revival here i may be allowed to give a word of personal testimony indicating what revival has meant to me some years ago along with dr thomas fitch i was speaking at the edinburgh convention for the deepening of spiritual life we had come to the closing meeting and i had given my address as i sat listening to dr fitch giving his last message i suddenly became conscious of my unfitness to be on that platform i saw the barrenness of my life and ministry i saw the pride of my own heart how very humiliating it was to discover that i was proud of the fact that i was booked to speak at five conventions that year that night in desperation on the floor of my study i cast myself afresh on the mercy of god 
he heard my cry for pardon and cleansing and as i lay prostrate before him wave after wave of divine consciousness came over me and the love of the savior flooded my being and in that hour i knew that my life and ministry could never be the same again nor could i ever doubt the baptism of the holy spirit brethren explain it as you will to me it was a baptism from on high and if in any small measure god has been pleased to use me it is all because of what he did for me that night when two things became clear to me christ's willingness to save the whosoever and the awful state of the eternally lost in hell that is what revival has meant to me personally and is not that just what happens in a general sense in the community revival said professor james s stewart is a new discovery of jesus god becoming real in the midst of men i have known the spirit of god laying hold of a community in such a way that you would hardly meet a person that was not seeking after god is it not of the reality of god's presence in revival power that paul is writing for god who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of god in the face of jesus christ brethren is this light visible in us are our lives are our churches lights that mark the road that leads men to the lamb in closing let me use a simple illustration some years ago i was on holiday on the island of jura while there i had the use of a very fine sailing boat one day with my daughter i sailed past a lighthouse that seemed to stand erect out of the ocean it being high tide the rock on which it was built was covered while passing the thought occurred to me that lighthouse could be as treacherous as the rock on which it is built but for the light it was the light that made the difference the structure was perfect and the building the work of a master but a positive danger to navigation apart from the light is the lighthouse a far-fetched comparison or do i see in it a representation of the institution we call the church and the vocation we call the ministry without the anointing of the holy spirit a positive danger in the community with the anointing giving direction because men see god